So, all bikers are scumbags, according to law enforcement, after they claim they worked a full five years to nab only a few damn people, and then they're blaming the whole Outlaws Motorcycle Club for what was happening. But, they say the convictions should send a message to all, air quotes, bikers. I say, really? Really? All bikers should be put on notice for the actions of just a few. It ain't the club's fault. It's not some big organized crime like you're saying. You only net it a few people. How is that organized crime? Canada. You really need to get it together, man. Let's take a look. And usually we do the good stuff, but this one irritated me. Recorder and Times Biker Conviction. A clear message. You got that? It's clear. They're saying, be on the watch out, bikers. In law enforcement, some victories take a long time. This week, Brockville police celebrated one such victory. What'd you guys do? Did you, like, go into the closet and circle jerk each other celebrating? That you wasted five years for only a few people? Is that what you did? I don't doubt it. You're freaks. Two Brockville men, Tom Bell and Norman Ross Bottom Jr., were convicted of a string of charges stemming from a biker gang raid three years ago. Man, you media laid on thick, baby. Now, here it is, and this is a quote, by the way. It sends a clear message to any organized crime, but there's a but, specifically bikers. It didn't say the clubs, nothing. It said bikers. So basically what you're saying is all bikers are scumbags. That's you. That's what you're saying. That's what I get out of this. For us to have netted a full patch and probationary patch respectively, I feel like it helps send a message. So because you got somebody that was full patch and a probationary patch, which was not authorized by the club. None of these clubs authorize this stuff. None. But you think that sends a message and it should go out to all bikers. That's what you're saying. They were found per, uh, guilty of participating in criminal organization directing the commission of an indictable offense for criminal organization, assault causing bodily harm, blah, 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 blah. You're already boring me here. Grant and Staff Sergeant Tom Foyer said the convictions cap a process that began in 2016 with reports of activity by Outlaw Motorcycle Club in the city. At least you said club this time. These types of investigation, they're not a sprint, they're a marathon. Oh, ain't that special. How much you waste uh how much money did you waste on this by the way? I really love to hear this. And he goes on to say it's a culmination of about five years worth of work. It involved, here's the kicker, 28 people, both uniformed and civilians. Now, 
Bell and Rossenbottom were among three charged as a result of those. In 2018, police arrested two people in connection with drug and weapons offenses with biker gang links. Get out of here, man. Then they claim four other later turned themselves in. So basically, you're going into the closet, which, by the way, do you guys ever come out? I'm, uh, I, I'm just asking for a friend. After you've already circle jerked everybody. And now you're all, are you like doing that? What is that? Hell? What? Uh, I even forget the freaking group now, but they dress like Indians, cops. I bet that's your Halloween party. I really do. And I think you must be on the Johnson of the newspaper and media because they are laying it on thick when it comes to this article, man. That's one thing that's disturbing. The other day we did the stop with the pagans down in Texas. Everything continues all over the nation. And I still had people say, well, if the one percenters weren't criminals, they wouldn't have to worry about it because you don't have to worry about that stuff if you're not breaking the law. You schmucks. That's what I have to say is you schmucks. Here they are in a newspaper saying, Bikers should get a message. Well, that's you, ain't it, numb nuts? Just saying. Sad state of affairs right here when they come out and basically call all bikers because of what a few did. They're basically saying you're scumbag. Which, hey, get used to it, man. That used to happen all the time in the early days. Man, did those boys have to deal with some stuff. Sad state of affairs. Sad state of affairs. Here we go. We're going to go to uh, a good story right now. Get here and uh, get this up for you. Like I said, we usually start off with it, but this one had me going. This home video captured a pretty exciting moment for kids at McIntosh School. The Bellator Titans Northeast Chapter surprised the kids with 25 Strider bikes. Uh, we're just trying to create more two-wheeled enthusiasts. The group raised more than $6,000 to purchase 25 kids' bikes and one adult bike. They'll stay with the school and be used in PE classes for kids in preschool through second grade. Happy I can ride. Be happy you can ride. I'm excited they might be at track and field day. Because I don't, uh, because I love those bikes and they're so fun on them. The school's goal is to have every child biking with confidence by the end of second grade. It teaches a lot, of course, for your for your large motor skills and develop muscle development. Um, also, just to learn also another way to have fun. For some of these kids, it's a chance to learn something new. And some of them were like, oh my gosh, I've never been on a bike before. And so they're super pumped about it. We have children who not everybody has an opportunity to ride a bike and develop their balance and coordination skills. Skills they'll keep forever because, as they say, it's like riding a bike. Rock and roll, man. Some good stuff right there. Making sure they are getting the next generation going. But another sad state of affairs here. We've been covering a lot of these lately. This from Memphis. A biker is killed again from a hit and run. Another one. Sad state of affairs. <laughs> this is just nuts. It just wants to kill you. Another one at Memphis. Go figure. Now, going over to the Times Union, bikers arrested as search for troopers stolen gun continues. Maybe you shouldn't have lost it. Just saying. 
You got to keep track of these things. Uh, let's see here. Two handguns have been recovered, but state police urgently looking for missing Glock. Maybe you guys shouldn't be in the closet and you wouldn't lose your firearms. Just saying. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Three firearms stolen recently from uh, a county resident of a trooper. Well, you should have closed your doors, dummy, and locked it. Including a 45 Glock Semi. At least one of the firearms was recovered when troopers this week arrested a 22-year-old member of a local biker gang. The Suicide Squad. Yeah, I'm not going there. That has ties to the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. That individual who uh, was issued an appearance ticket for Troy City Court and faces felony and misdemeanor charges. Two teenagers whose identities are not public due to their age have been charged with the break-in. So it really wasn't them that did it. But because they're affiliated with Hells Angels, this story made it. Again, it wouldn't be a story if he would have locked his door and got out of the closet. I'm just saying. Wall of shame. 25-year veteran police officer arrested for alleged stalking. Hey, there your freaks go. Uh, law enforcement authorities are investigating a 61-year-old Wichita police officer for alleged stalking. According to the release, they recently learned that Officer Joseph Spagella was possibly involved in domestic violence with a woman he knows. They investigated the Sedwick County Sheriff's at the request of Wichita in order to avoid conflicts of interest. As a result of the investigation, they arrested Dude on a charge of stalking. Uh, and then they're still investigating the case. He's been on 25 years, no longer active. Uh, he is no longer in custody. You freaker. Always with you freaks, man. And here you are saying that all bikers are scumbags, that you should be on the lookout, and that we're not playing around. We're sending a message to all you. That's basically what I got out of that whole newspaper article with all them quotes. And the scary thing is that most cops think that way. Most cops do not like bikers. It's been going on for decades and decades and decades. People are just realizing it now. Especially after we showed those pagans in Texas getting hardcore profiled, man. They don't even hide at these cops anymore. The disdain that they have motorcycle clubs five years they wasted all that money and they're happy they got a patch member and a probate member and some supporters that doesn't sound too criminal to me as an organization that just seems like there's few that went out on their own and do some stuff and that's why I don't like it, man. You're always saying criminal organization. Half these time, these guys can't even pay their dues, you dummies. How is that criminal? They go to work just like you. They're just not assholes like you. And they provide for their families. It's basically insanity with the back and forth with you people. And what's with the media all the time? You either hate the cops or you like them. Because you know what? You're all over the peckers when something like this happens. Is it for the ratings? You got to explain this to me. I'm confused, okay? I'm slow. I admit it, I'm slow. I don't get what your problem is. Sad state of affairs. We're going to go over to the second half of the show, and I got a treat for you. 
the second half of the show, we're going to throw a a Morning Hoot episode on there. So you to hear me and China now go back and forth. That way you get a little taste of what that show is about in the mornings that go Monday through Friday at 8.15 Central Standard Time, the 9.15. You to download the, the radio app on Google Play, listen in our Discord, or go into InsaneThrottleTV.com. Don't forget to hit that Roco TV and all that stuff. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>